Hello everyone, today we have a new cube over here. This is by MS Cube. And to give you guys a little background information, MS Cube was recently acquired by Diensheng. I think it's really cool that this type of thing is happening in cubing, as long as, you know, transactions are fair and people are happy, because it just makes more collaborations possible and more creativity. So this is the new MS Cube. It looks rather unremarkable on the outside, but like many MS Cubes, the features on the inside can get pretty wildly creative. So we're gonna take a look at this cube Cube, open it up. I actually don't even know what this cube is called or how much it is or anything really. So first things first, I'm just going to turn the cube. Ultimately, how the cube performs is the most important factor and not what kind of fancy features it has. So let's try it. So this cube is not bad, but it's also not extraordinarily good. You know, from the get-go, it's very average. One thing I do notice is when I grab the cube like this, the cube deforms. Like, you can peel the edge pieces away from the center, and whenever I feel like a cube can do this, I feel like the cube has more potential for locking up, and this especially happens when I do M-slice PLLs. When I'm even holding the cube, I can push the edge piece down. So this does not seem like it's very pop resistant. And the fact that I can even deform the cube with one hand like this doesn't rub me a good way. I just have a lot of trouble. I can't even right now. I think the lead engineer at MS Cube used to work at GAN. The level this cube performs at is like probably around the XS. It feels like an older cube and it doesn't conform to GAN's like newer feel and newer design, but at the same time, like it doesn't need to, it's not GAN, but it just reminds me of like a really old GAN cube. All right, so there's probably a lot of weird stuff going on in here. So let's open it up and take a look. Boom. All right, so when you open this cube up, the first thing you'll notice is that there is a numbered sort of dial here. This looks like it does spring compression. There is a spring, so it's not maglev, and there is an ordinary screw. I love ordinary screws. Underneath, there are eight magnets on the underside. Honestly, it looks really beautiful, like kind of like an artwork. It makes you wonder, what are these magnets for? So let's continue to open up the cube and find out. I'm feeling a lot of factory lube. I hate this factory lube. It makes the feeling of the puzzle really dull. So I'm gonna wipe off the factory lube. Like I think the cube would feel a lot better if it was crispier and it had a more natural plastic to plastic contact. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing feed magnets. What is that? There's like a core and then there is a red thing over the core. I wonder what that does. So this is the core. The centers don't have any skirts or any real shape to them. So the magnets in the center, let's see what happens. I'm gonna build a block here and then feel what happens here. So really interesting. I'm trying to figure out what all these magnets down at the center even do. All right, so here's a string of magnets. I just wanna poke the underside of it just to feel how strong the magnets are. Okay, so do these have magnets here? This edge piece does not have magnets outside of this, so it's just a corner. Okay, do you think we should take this apart? Sure. Yeah, let's do it. Hopefully this doesn't like destroy the cube because like some screws aren't meant to be unscrewed apparently so i don't know what this red component is on the core it doesn't make the experience of using the cube negative i just don't know what it's there for so there is a tiny gear system so this thing controls elasticity we know that for a fact now okay so now that i'm like poking these magnets around the underside of the centerpiece the attraction is super weak like bruh so there's some attraction here and then it repels here. Yeah, do you wanna feel that? It's really interesting. So at this stage it attracts and if you uh, move the centerpiece along the corner, it will, it will repel. Okay, so there's like an attracting magnet and then a repelling and attracting. Yeah, like it I think goes, it alternates. It just alternates. But it's still so weak. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, yeah. A, it's an interesting idea, but like there's too much plastic between the magnets. Mm -hmm. It makes it not very effective. All right, so the other thing I want to play with is the elasticity control. We weren't given any tools with this cube, so I'm going to assume either a tool will come later or you can do it by hand. Okay, okay, okay. So it goes like this. So you're turning it counterclockwise and there's a little bit of plastic you can grab onto to turn it with your finger. I think this type of design is really smart, but how do you tell what setting you're on? I see. Yeah. So there's 
five settings, it mm -hmm. looks like, mm -hmm. and, the, and yes. the numbers just repeat. Yeah. So there's like four lines, and they all point to the same number. Oh, okay, those like four plastic. So if I adjust it like this, it'll point, they're still pointing to five. Those protrusions of plastic, they move with the five. What? Wait. <laughs> look, look, come over here. You can grab this little piece of plastic and turn it right. So at this point, I've turned it three times and it's still- Oh, so the whole thing moves. The whole thing moves. Yeah. yeah. So then maybe it's aligned with these little plastic bits on the on the edge of the center. Oh, maybe. Yeah, let's like, see. Because those are pointing to five now, but if you move it, now it's pointing to three. No, that's, that doesn't work. No. Well, it's the only other like indicator inside the center. Yeah. Uh, we have no idea how to actually tell what setting we're on. Two, three, four, five. I just can't tell the difference. There's no... Yeah, there's no obvious reset click. Yeah, there's no... like pops back up. Exactly. Like the Moyu one, it goes in pretty deep. I don't know. All right, so future film here coming to interrupt past film to tell you that there is another feature in this cube that uh, we discovered after our initial filming. So let me show you what it is. This torpedo here on each edge piece is actually adjustable. This is the adjusted position. When we first got the cube, it was in this retracted position like this. And this greatly increases the stability on the puzzle. So in the beginning of the video, when I grabbed the puzzle and showed it deforming, it happens less when the torpedoes are extended like this. So what you can actually do is pull this guy out and then turn it. Uh, let me see if I can do it with my bare hand here. I don't really have nails, so might need a... Uh... Oh, I got it. Oh, there you go. So it's very inaccurate to do it by hand. Not very comfortable. Uh, you can see there's like a little hole here. So there might be a tool that goes through and then you can pull which would make everything a lot easier. We extended out the torpedoes on every edge piece in here. Let's try the cube now. So the turning is a little more fluid. I, I feel it locks up less. The end slices feel way better. So this adjustment feature is really interesting because it kind of reminds us about 2011 when we first learned that, hey, torpedoes might be good in your cube, you know, but this isn't 2011 and we don't need to be shown that in order to be happy with a cube. So this really begs the question, why is it adjustable and what's the point of it, right? It feels like this is a case where an engineer designed something that they feel was like creative but it doesn't have any real life application in this cube. The unadjusted state of the cube, the one without the torpedoes is so bad, but the one with the torpedoes is actually quite good. Ideally, if this adjustment system was designed better, you would have two different versions with two different feels that both have some sort of redeeming quality. You know, you can say without torpedoes, it might be faster or more flexible. And in exchange, if you put the torpedoes up, you might lose a little bit of those positives, but you'll gain stability and it gives you a trade-off and the trade-off is what makes customizing a cube fun because you can express yourself. It's hardly expressive if you decide, hey, do you wanna make your cube good or do you wanna make your cube bad? It's kind of a joke and I'm not really sure what to think of this besides, if I'm using this cube, it's gonna be with the torpedoes up. Speaking of using the cube, we're just gonna solve on the cube and I'll talk about how I feel as I'm solving. Yeah, pretty good time. With the torpedoes up, the performance of this cube is better. The feel still feels like an old style Gan cube, but that's less of a negative than an observation that it feels like an old style Gan cube. Still kind of locky though. I definitely want to main this cube. Cubing on it feels super risky. Uh, okay, all right, I got this. Okay, so that's an example of a lockup right there. I don't know if you can play it in slow motion. Can't look at Randy Orton slithering. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, Yeah, so my times are very inconsistent because I keep getting stopped by the cube when my turning gets a little messy. All right, one more solve, one more solve. Set, die. 
Sub 10 or die. Sub 10 or die. Oh. <laughs> I thought I would have to do a really hard scramble, but it wasn't that bad after I looked at it more. So yeah, my times on this cube are wildly inconsistent. A cube like this is cool and everything, but I don't think that any serious cubers would actually main this. I think the biggest telling factor is whether cubers sponsored by this company, Diancheng, actually believe that this cube will give them the best times possible. It's been a few days since we've had the cube and we still don't really know what the price will be. I would guess that it's going to be in the $30 range, between 30 and 40. That's how much I think the company will value the cube at. The most I would pay for this is probably 20 bucks. Maybe if it is, then it'll be a pretty good cube in that range. I just hope that the adjustment feature of the torpedoes doesn't cost a lot to implement and design. You know, it's kind of hard to argue that the adjustment feature provides any sort of benefit. As a result, consumers might just be paying more for something that shouldn't have existed in the first place. I'm glad we took some time to understand these features. Maybe if you try this cube, you can also give us some input in the comments on how you feel about it and what you think is a good balance between engineering for engineering's sake and engineering for utility. Hopefully this doesn't offend Diancheng too much. I genuinely believe that they're creative designers, but some of these features just don't make any sense to me. Yeah, I just want to keep it real. Bye.